Hi, this is Bob Wells here, and welcome to Undercurrent Stories. This is the show where we hear about people's interests and uncover some fascinating stories at the same time. I hope you enjoy today's show. In today's show, I'm delighted to be joined by Yumiko Jones. Yumiko started the Bristol Japanese Culture Society in 2008 after coming to the UK originally in 2001. She's made it her mission to educate people in the city about the rich Japanese culture. In her words, it is much more than just about sushi. Hello and welcome to the show, Yumiko. Hello, thank you for having me. It's great that you've come on. Thank you so much. Um, So so how are things, obviously, you know, we've had the COVID situation over the last year. How have things been for you? Yeah, it's been it's been actually great for me because I never have at this time longer holiday being paid before. So <laughs> I enjoy it, to be honest. I'm sorry for my husband, but <laughs> Yeah. So you you've actually it's actually been quite good for you in some ways. Yeah, yeah, it is good for me. The I I meant to do lots of things that before but yeah. I was too busy working so I couldn't do. So I doing more for origami or like um, making Japanese culture tradition things around my house. So yeah, I can spend time more. To yeah, do it's those it's good. I think it, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think for for everybody it's been tough, and some some people obviously particularly tough. Uh, but I think for a lot of people it's been an opportunity to explore other stuff, and you know life yeah. life's been can be simpler, but. Uh, no, it's, I, I think, think it's been so. generally pretty tough. Anyway, before we talk about Japanese culture and the society that, that you, you run, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself and your life's journey and how you decided to base your life in the UK, please, Yumiko? Um, so I, I, I came into England. Well, I guess I always wanted to go abroad from Japan since I was quite... 10 i want to see the world because i think japan is not only the world so yeah then I, yeah then uh, i want to come to you to europe first of all okay then then i like fashion i'm, I'm a profession as a hairdresser i really like fashion then i was looking around but anyway in europe i can't speak the language so Based on that, the English is kind of most yeah. opportunity to yeah. Then then London fashion it's really funky enough for me to come. So then worked in London for seven years. Yeah. Yeah. And, so. and that introduced you to London. Um, and where whereabouts do you come from in Japan? What part of Japan? Uh, I'm from south of Japan. It's called the uh, Fukuoka, yeah. um, which is the uh, eighth biggest city in Japan. Okay. So the population of about 1,500 million yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting, isn't it? Because... Um, mm. Japan and, and the UK are they're on a similar latitude, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They are quite similar. Digit. I quite surprised that the uh, we both are islands, yeah, so not the continent. So we don't really tell things that directly, or no, always it has to be indirect. Or yeah, and a good old English, a, a typical English question: How's the weather in Japan compared with with the UK? Ah. Uh, we definitely have a proper four seasons in Japan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I don't know, because I guess probably the attitude in the UK is more north, so a little bit more colder and then yeah. cloudier. Yeah. I, I When I think of Japan, I, th- I think of those those lovely spring blossoms on trees. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. It's in that. Uh, in this about the season end of march to april only two weeks but that's japanese soul i think everybody like yeah yeah everybody excited about it but then i think japan is so long country you don't realize that north is closer to russia south is closer to hawaii so it's a long stretch the country so the uh, various weather you can actually see yeah, that's it's a country I'd love to go to. Perhaps talk about that a bit later on. So when when you yeah. came to um, 
when you came to settle in Bristol, um, mm-hmm. what what sort of numbers of Japanese people were, were there? Much of an expat population of Japanese people living in Bristol. Um, so when I came into Bristol, I suppose it was about a few hundred people in Bristol Southwest. Yeah. And I think come around about 10 years, I think increase it to like uh, 1,000 or a couple of thousand people now, I assume. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think it's quite increased people who live yeah. in uh, Bristol Southwest. And how, how did you find, when you came to Bristol, how did you find settling in, into the uh, the Bristol way of life? Uh, luckily, my husband had family and friends in Bristol, so uh, they helped me to introduce me to go to pubs and all the music industry and to help me to settle in down, I suppose. And yeah. also, I have a more Japanese friend, wife's friends in Bristol than can share the, your experience and all that stuff. Yeah, so, so, so your husband's English? He's English, yes. Yeah, yeah. And um, and and so when, when you gradually got into the Bristol way of life, why mm-hmm. did you do, or what, what sort of thoughts did you have about having a society in Bristol? What, what, what inspired you to do that? Um, basically, I was um, helping the Japanese society Introducing like a Japanese culture in Bath. In Bath. Um, yeah, in yeah, Bath. Yeah. So that was quite popular. We all did the Jap- uh, introducing Japanese culture to raising the money for the Tohoku Japanese earthquake in 2001. Yes. Uh, 2011. So um, um, then I was helping that, and then the Bath people are more united and powerful. And why I cannot do in Bristol? That's why, like, yeah, okay. And I got I've been in Bristol ten years. I got lots of connection now. So why don't I start doing it? That's yeah. how I yeah how I start. So so the Bath Japanese Society that it, it, it was more vibrant. There was more going on. Yeah yes because of the uh, Bath and uh, Beppu, which is in the island, the small city. There is a uh, twinning cities. So they are more organised yeah. and city-wise, they like, yeah they yeah. do more. Yeah, and in, ha- and how many number how many members do you have in in the um, Japanese society in Bristol? Uh, so our society actually we don't do that style of uh, membership no. yet. Ah, oh, okay. So yeah, so so anybody who can help me, that's that's more than welcome. So yeah. in in the future, we really want to do become more like a membership system what's the point being a membership or yeah and, and is it is it just for japanese people or, or can other people come um i aim for more for like uh, local people to involve us to understand in the japanese culture yeah and um, and also my aim is to making this society is the job the introduce japanese culture to children yes because when you are small and experience in the another culture, that's privilege and then change your mind, broad your mind, and it's good for your education, I suppose. So, and how how would you describe the the sort of essence the essence of Japanese style? Particular, I mean, I I'm thinking of um, ikebana. Is it ikebana? Or Ikebana. Ikebana, yeah. I- Ikebana, Ikebana, Ikebana yeah. yeah, which is very minimal and almost has like a spiritual quality. Does that go right through all, all culture, do you think? Um, I guess they are like, um, in terms of not only Ikebana, it's all the minimalism and style. It's kind of well known as Zen and all this kind of spiritual minimalism style. Yeah. Well, I guess more for more for like the Japanese gardens are well calculated the minimalism of beauty in a way I think yes and yeah that's I think it's quite related to um Swedish the culture as well because they they also use like uh, maximize the space to minimize the all the furniture and all that stuff 
Yes. And I was quite surprised that when I went to Sweden, they do have a strong connection with Japan too. And they've got the Higa thing, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Is, so, um, and that's similar as well, is it? Yeah, so I went to the um, uh, folk house in Sweden. Yeah. And north from Stockholm. And there is a... Apparently, they had a Japanese culture events there. Oh, right. And they say, mm, they're saying how they used to live in people in the house. The layout is kind of quite similar to how we used to live in, in the old days in Japan's house, I think. Yeah, that, that, that's very mm. interesting. That's very interesting. So, so um, minimal amount of stuff in, in the house, I would suggest. Yeah, minimise and uh, maximise yeah. the space, I suppose. Yeah. I, th- I think over the last year where I've been working at home, I think I've been doing that. <laughs> but that's really <laughs> continual tidying up in my little house, in my house, and my study, yeah. my little study, just to make sure I, oh. I can actually live and work in it. So I, I think a lot of people can uh, can see that. Um, I think, um, yep. Sorry, you were saying. Uh, no, the um, I thought the uh, that's really good for your spiritual mind as well, isn't it? Like a uh, little for the clutters, and then therefore you can actually think better if you surround it by the clutter. It's just like a spread your mind, so like your minds go away easily. So it's kind of related to Zen. Yeah, a- absolutely. De- yeah, de- definitely. Mm. I I um I relish a trip to the local council t- uh, dump. Where I can uh-huh. I can get rid of stuff, uh, which has built up over the years, and and particularly as they recycle it, and you know it's going to a good cause, and it frees frees you up. I, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Um. So when when you have the events for the the, uh, the Japanese culture society, um, I guess so. Obviously, over the last year, it's had to be remote. But normally, w- would you do a talk to a load of people? Is that how it works? And uh, so normally the um I. Well, I guess it only started from 2000, well, I start, set off from start, uh, 2017, and actually I did the event in 2018. Yeah. So it's not so long ago. No. But um, generally, I do try to talk to you about my Japanese culture, and I wear kimono most of the time, talk around, walk around, and see actually the people recognize what, what the what it is uh, what she dressing like and yes. um people are i guess many people know what is kimono is perhaps but however my friend told me even though you're wearing kimono that the people ask you if you were chinese or something so oh, really? i kind of yeah <laughs> <laughs> so which is i guess like a for like caucasian or people who doesn't have an acknowledged then like chinese or japanese all the same anyway perhaps but which is a bit annoyed about it. So yeah, I that's bet. why I I asked Jez that to do that interview about the uh, Japanese people. We are Japanese people, not the same as Chinese people. And also, as you know, you might read about the BBC article, the, my first client asked me about like, so you're from Japan, which part of China are you from? Oh, really? So, yeah, That's I was terrible. so so shocked <laughs> yeah. that Japan has not recognised as a country. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's that's quite surprising. So so it's great to hear that you 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 sort of wear your kimono out most of the time, not not just for for sort of you know the, the society dues. You, you would wear it around around the city. Yeah, and also when I was working as well, I'm wearing kimono to cut in all the people's hair, so which amuse all the clients. Yeah, as well. So yeah. yeah. So what sort of reaction do you get from people when when um, you tell them actually no, I'm not from China, I'm I'm from Japan. How do they react? Most of the people don't care, really, no. to be honest. No, <laughs> no. Because um, I think it's significant. They don't really know what the difference is. Yeah. We all just look the same. Yeah, well. But yeah. so obviously, this this show that with this episode that you're kindly taking part in, we haven't got um, the amount of time to talk about all of Japanese culture. But I think listeners yeah. would love to have a flavour of some of the aspects of Japanese culture. Would you be able to share some of that with us, please, Yamoka? Yeah. Um, 
so so Japanese culture it got so much culture influence and it's surprisingly um Japan and UK has share like say like a pottery culture in Cornwall. Their masters they in and out exchange all the their techniques and that stuff. Or nowadays I think it's all the famous uh chefs the celebrity chefs are they using more like a Japanese ingredients and Japanese words as such as like a umami or that kind of soya sauce yeah. or that kind of stuff. And and also, oh yeah, in Japan, it's really foodie people. So yeah. the most Michelin star uh, restaurants in the world. Yes, food is a big, big part of the culture. I think so, because when I start, when I ask in around, so I want to do that uh, event, what should I do? They're all asking around the Japanese, Japanese uh, events must have a food because Japanese is more as yeah associated with food I suppose yeah or for the architects and the product design yeah or or games and animes more more than this perhaps yeah there, there's so many different aspects of, of Japanese culture yeah isn't there? and also like a karaoke is a Japanese word it's so much imported to world in the UK now I sorry think. what what was that word karaoke Kalauga. Yeah, you yeah. know the karao- karaoke in English? Oh, sorry, ka- the, karaoke. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. Japanese word, singing yeah. in front of people. Yeah, it's everywhere, isn't it? it, it yeah. Japanese culture's everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere. Yeah, exactly. everywhere yeah, you go. So, so, so for yes. me to ask you to tell me all about Japanese culture would take, a, take ages, wouldn't it? A week or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, because yeah. like Japan also has a long history, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> so much things. Suitable. And what, what about the the sort of martial arts? Is that something that you um, you get into at all? Um, so martial arts, the so we we use to show as a kendo, judo, and um, or the aikido, and also I. It's really new martial arts. It's called the shintaido. Yeah. It's used the uh, wooden sword and mimic of the the emotion of the the samurai. Yeah. But it which is like a spiritual uh, aspect in influence because how you throw the sword. Yeah. That the um, if you not concentrate, it won't drop that to the target right or yeah so it is really interesting it's, it's similar to yoga i suppose the yoga pose if you're not concentrate you're not going to get that pose properly yeah like a tree pose or something yeah. so and is that something that um you've got your husband to get involved with at all uh, my husband tried to get into uh uh kendo so he's quite good at to uh that he he was good at so the kiai, which yeah. is like uh, making a noise, but he couldn't walk properly because the oh. way how we walk, it's called suriyashi, is so difficult for English people to do somehow. Yeah, because your feet yeah. keep keep still keep stay in the floor to go forward. Right don't lift your feet yeah. but you move forward it's and what's what's that called yomoko suriyashi su su suriyashi suriyashi yes right and that's that's um that's with swords yeah that's really hard for him to do but which is really important for us to do that all this movement yeah yeah I think it's the history wise, you wouldn't make the noise when you walk around because in Japanese house, we don't wear the shoes. No. So we do walk smoothly. Yes. In If you lift it, your feet up, you make a noise. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I think, history wise. It's most of the Japanese historical movie is showing about what, how people walk in is, is that way. Yeah. 
So, so one part of the culture that I have always found fascinating, and I hope mm-hmm. I pronounce it correctly, is kintsugi. Yes. Where, where? Can you tell us a bit about that, please? Uh, so kintsugi is the um, made in. I think it's Edo period. Is it started to the uh, some posh, the pottery being broken, and yeah. then the um, to how to fix that. Uh, Bowl, the tea ceremony bowls use uh, gold to making things even more beautiful. Yes. Then that's how it started. So the uh, I think English, I think it's philosophically is really beautiful. So yeah. if it's broken, just throw away. Yeah. The, you have, you must reuse it and even make it things more beautiful to con- continuously so, usable. So for, that is that is the ultimate upcycling. Yes. That's fantastic, isn't it? To actually yeah. not throw it away, to actually make it more beautiful. and, and So so they, yeah. they use the gold as, as part of the adhesive and the glue to put it together again. Yeah, so use use the gold to glue together yeah. for the part of the pot. Yeah. Then that's how they make it. So, yeah. so, and forgive me if this is a bit naive, does that mean that if, if um, a typical Japanese family breaks some pottery, they, they would automatically... Uh, glue it together, or would they throw it away in, in normal times? Because uh, I guess we in Japan, Japanese, the philosophy quite similar to the uh, Irish philosophy, which is like a paganism. The uh, we have everything has a spirit, and you have you must be careful what you're using, and then like a taking down to the generation to order each items. Yeah. So, so it means that the, I think that that's the tea, like a Japanese philosophy that to say that broken things, what you make it yeah. get together to get beautiful. Yeah. I don't know. It makes sense. And, and do, you, do you think most people... Uh, I mean, so so we're talking about we're sort of getting into into religion on this. Um, the well, I'm not so about the religion. Perhaps it's part of religion, but that perhaps that's kind of how we raise how yeah. you grow up. So it's just a way of where you brought up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you must be grateful for everything. So even you eat, eat it before. Before you eat, you say itadakimasu. After you finish food, and then ari, uh, gotsou sama, or each arigato gozaimasu, or that kind of action and words are like uh, more related to spiritual, yeah, in a way. And is is that is that um, spirituality as common and popular now as it's ever been? Um. Some people just don't dig into the deep philosophy. Therefore, people, some people are against this idea of itadakimasu, arigato. But, but people say arigato, but gotsou sama, itadakimasu is a very spiritual word. Yeah. So, yeah, people are against the saying they, they think that's a religious word. But I think it's down to the like few thousand years of the... Japanese psychology and philosophy. I yeah, suppose. so so the the, the mm. children are passed it down by their parents and so on. Mm-hmm. So I think so. Go to Zen Buddhism and all that stuff, I suppose. Yeah, and and in terms of fashion, I mean, you, meant, you mentioned that you um, you do hair, um, yes. But in in terms of Japanese fashion, does it remain quite classic, or are there sort of new things coming in all the time? What what's the current state of Japanese fashion? Current state of Japanese fashion. I think Japanese are really good at to remaking, creating things. So, uh, yeah. and a unique fashion. So, it's like uh, all these anime fashions and uh, cosplay, and and also the subculture fashions. The subculture. Subculture, yeah, such yeah. as anime, gaming industry, and yeah. and all this like a cyber kind or well, cafe or 
those kind of super unique yeah. fashions. So that, I think is the the TV series they doing like a dog grooming things. Also, they said the Japanese style of dog grooming style, which making like anime. Yeah. Are there any aspects of of Japanese culture that perhaps most people in the UK wouldn't know about? Well, I guess the yeah, like Japanese people love jazz jazz music and if you go to japan music everywhere yes they love jazz music if you go anywhere in europe they go jazz uh concert yeah. always japanese people there is that right <laughs> that's interesting yes <laughs> and when you go to japan you can hear jazz or those kind of uh music everywhere even in a cafe or yeah. Like Japanese tea shop or any kind of Japanese place, but always like a jazz, soft jazz playing That's background music, even in a lift as well. Oh, really? So, 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 so if you want to open a business in um, Japan, uh, yeah. always put your go-to music on, which is a bit of jazz. You'll be okay. Yeah, jazz <laughs> is a super huge thing, and also it's interesting. My husband likes all the music, and he collects in all the vinyls. And he collected like a Japanese psychedelic band. Probably they don't know well known in Japan, but then well known in uh, any other country, maybe. Psychedelic band, did you say? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. psychedelic yeah. or yeah. Yeah, well, that's interesting. Or, it's quite and, interesting. So, which is quite good in Bristol. Those kind of band came in to Bristol and see. And actually, if the Japanese band and I can talk to them, <laughs> yeah, that that must be really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Another yeah, thing that, yeah, that quite yeah, another thing that Japan's very famous for now, and it's developed it over the last probably thirty, forty years, is the whiskey industry, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Whiskey is yeah because it Big started stuff. from nineteen twenties. It so it originated it, in the nineteen twenties, right? Yes. So yeah. beforehand, the whiskey probably doesn't exist in Japan. And, no. and the one guy came into Scotland to learn how to brew the whiskey yeah. and bring it back to Hokkaido, which is north of Japan, and which is the soil and the landscape is quite similar to Scotland. So they started to brew. Yeah. And that's the how they started the uh, whiskey. And then at the moment, now is the best whiskey, a single malt, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. yeah. So he he's a very famous man, that guy. Um, yeah, he was in a drama, Japanese drama, in a few years ago. Was he? <laughs> About the uh, how to brew the whiskey oh, right. through the duel in a war as well. Yeah. And yeah. That's an, uh, whis- that must be an interesting story. Is that drama available still? Uh, not sure, because no. Japan is very strict about the who can watch now stuff. So oh, really? I was watching it illegally, but yeah, yeah it, it is really fascinating because he had a Japanese wife and an uh, uh, English wife yes. who met in Scotland and then uh, she actually came into Japan, want to stay with him. Yeah. But because of the war, she, she must, because uh, the England was became an uh, enemy. So yeah. she, she gonna be in prison just because she was English. So she must have gone back to Scotland, I think, oh, right. at that time. It's kind of a sad story. but Yeah, it is. Yeah, that... around that time being developed, all the whiskey is, I think it's almost run out now, so yeah. you cannot get that same quality anymore. Right, <laughs> okay. So, and, and since you've been in the UK, are, are there any similarities that you've noticed between Japan and the UK? Um, so as I mentioned that before, but the personality and and how behavior, yeah, um, yeah, I suppose I think the both country people nations are uh, they think is the best in the world. That kind of attitude. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, for for listeners who have been inspired listening to Yimoko and and want to find out more about Japanese culture, how can they find out more? Um, actually, in London, there is a Japan house in Kensington High Street, and they do actually they do show all this like a post Japanese culture and, and Japanese all the technology to the traditional culture things, and also 
you can actually go to the Japanese embassy. Yes. They, you can, they do have a ex, temporary exhibition in a routine. And also there is a library as well. So you can actually have a look. And um, probably it's finished now, but the V&A used to do the kimono exhibition. Yeah. And, um, and the Japanese... Japan Center, which is in London too, and they do have like all these Japanese books, the potteries, and like a sake food, and you can eat the food as well. You can experience mini Japan things. Yeah, I'll put all that on the show notes then, Yumoko. So people yeah, yeah, can, yeah, uh, yeah, that'd be it. good. No, so. that, that's excellent. Um, now, yeah. one of the places I think I mentioned earlier in the show, I would love to go to Japan, and so for anybody that would like to come, to, like to go and visit Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, what would you suggest? I mean, it's it's quite a, a big country to see, isn't it? What what would you, what would yes. you suggest is a good start for them? How how where would they go? Um, depends on what you wanted to see, really. Yeah. Because if you don't mind big city, because because of the volume of the population, it's enormous. So if you freak out about the humans, then I wouldn't recommend it to big city. But yeah. but Tokyo is definitely. You got to see. I was worked in yeah, Tokyo for seven years, and and then come to London was I I amused that the less populated and more spaced out. You can see the blue sky actually, and the lifestyle is totally different. Yeah. But the um, yes. So if you wanna go shopping or like weird experience, then maybe Tokyo. Yeah. History, maybe Kyoto, because especially Kyoto. Nara. Yeah. Nara is the, it was the capital about 1300 years ago. Was it? And um, yeah, and then there is a park because we do uh, speak a deer as a god. No, uh, it's like an angel. What's that? The, so we do treat the a deer as a god's helper or something. Yeah. So, and and then or the, as a tourist, you can buy the shika senbei, which is a treat for shika, shika deer, and you can actually feed them, right. and which is really interesting experience that actually the deer, you can touch the deer, the t- deer attack you maybe, yeah. if you got that treat. <laughs> <laughs> that might be interesting. And also my, my hometown, Fukuoka, is very famous for lots of food from everywhere sorry what was that hometown yes. uh, fukuoka is fukuoka. my hometown yeah because yeah. tokyo obviously there is so many michelin stuff it's super expensive but yeah. coming to fukuoka there is just food for cheap price and then that... good quality so which is i i highly recommend it yes yeah that sounds like a place i'd like to go to i have to say yeah <laughs> Plenty of food, good prices. Yeah, yeah. And also people are so nice as well. So right. it's like a Spanish people. People perhaps don't speak in the language, but they're trying to take you to the direction. So. Yeah. That's another thing, isn't it? Um, to, yeah. to learn some basic Japanese would be good, I guess, before you go. But I guess it's got a high technology mobile phone. The mobile phone can talk to yeah. the other people, isn't it? So yeah. it'll be... <laughs> Yeah. You don't need to worry too much, perhaps. I suppose that all I would like is, can I have two beers, please? <laughs> and my my yeah, friend, guess... my friend will pay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess my husband doesn't speak in much Japanese, but um, he can get away with it. He can go for drinking himself. So can he? Yeah. many people can. The younger generation, especially, they can speak English a little bit, especially the the record people, the vinyl collector people are, yeah. they got little. But I guess if you feel like you want to connect with somebody, the language is not necessary. So be brave. You can go anywhere you Just want be and brave, you can yeah. experience. Yeah. And also, you don't need to, well, I guess, to speak in Japanese, but um, most of the, the cheap shop cheap restaurants are like a ticketed yes so you buy the ticket give it to them and then pay for them and then food is coming so so you don't have to keep worrying about what you're having and ordering you do it first yeah or either you can go to restaurant and looking around people eating and you can say i want that yeah so that should be fine. 
yeah but not what not their not their meal itself yeah i understand yeah yeah um, yeah so so you're um you're you're currently off work when, when do you expect to be going back uh expecting back in 12th april so it's another few weeks that's when all the hairdressers open again yes yes i can't wait all my clients cannot wait so getting appointment every day, oh, really? <laughs> which is yeah. good. Yes. Yeah. And have you got any other apart from the society? Have you got any other projects coming up? And uh, so, uh, for the events, I really, I don't know what's going to happen for the future. But um, I want to do all my uh, audience. There's for the from events. They told me. It's nice to have all the events like experience together, but then they want to do more concentrate of the events. So am I going to do a choreography part or kimono dressing part or yeah. or the ikebana or so it's all like a one activity in one time. They do like a whole month of like experience show or something. Yeah. And to to raising the money for the Bristol Children's Hospital. Have are there any other? Um, uh, you mentioned the one in Bath, uh, and, and mm-hmm. obviously the one you've got in Bristol. Are, are there Japanese societies throughout the UK? In other towns, uh, not as a society, perhaps, but they do have a small community of like different Japanese um, community in throughout the world over the UK because I'll be hearing if you're a mom, you have a kid um, and yeah. then you want to introduce or just Japanese culture um, example like in Taunton, the lady who uh, I think she's from Brazil yeah. and second generation Japanese because oh, right. in historically in um, I'm sure around the 1900, early 1900, they uh, the Japanese people, lots of Japanese people went to Brazil and uh, Peru for plantation workers and they got a uh, second, third generation of Japanese people there yes. and coming to all over the world now. So they look like us, Japanese, yeah. but they don't speak any Japanese, but they're really curious about Japanese culture. Oh, right. yeah. Those in... people are also interested in uh, to introduce Japanese culture to local as well. And that's in Taunton? Yeah, that's in Taunton. Okay. So she does a uh, small events in a library. Yeah. And also Cardiff and uh, Cardiff and Japan also very strong relationship between Japan and well, Wales. And the lady who uh, enormously invested their money to the culture events. So, yes. so I think they are twin training as well for i don't know which city but to, yeah. they have a and also so london and tokyo is twinning city yeah and um, i'm not sure about the north no of england i not really have no but they used to have a japanese uh japanese guest house in north wales i'm not sure if it's still going no. on no. Right. Well, it, so so it's been great talking to you. Now, if if anybody wants any any listeners from not just the UK but from around the world want want to hear more about what you're doing, um, where can they reach you, Yamoko? Um, so I have an Instagrams and the Facebook and Twitter. Is, you know, my email address, and you can actually access and ask me all the questions in the Bristol Japanese culture or Bristol Japan show, you can research. Yeah, if you can research on any questions and I'll, I'll love to answer the question as much as I can. Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll, put, other, I'll put all that on the show notes um, yeah. and all on the social media channels. So so if people are interested, they, they can they yes. contact you. Thank you very much. So it's been it's been lovely talking to you, Mako. So thank you so much for coming on. Yes, thank you to... Yeah, thank you for inviting us. It's nice to talk to you, and I really love to talking about Japanese culture. If people wanted to talk to me about more about the Japanese culture and so on, please let me know. Just contact me on emails or Facebook, Instagrams, and Twitters. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Anything you wanted to. Yeah, that would be lovely to talk to you. Brilliant. Thank you, Yumoka. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rose. 
You have been listening to Undercurrent Stories. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please feel free to share the show link to your friends and family. And if you have 60 seconds, I would be most grateful if you would please rate and review. To hear more episodes, please subscribe to the show and visit undercurrentstories.com. If you leave your email in the link, we will notify you as soon as new episodes are released. Also, check out our social media links, details of which can be found on the show notes. Until next time, this is Bob Wells wishing you all the very best.